Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to our podcast. Today, we are coming at you with some budgeting tips all about money, when you should save, how you can save better. Today, I will be your host. And over there, we got Steven. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. Thanks for listening again. Across from me, we have Jun. Yo! What's up, guys? <laughs> and our host is Crystal. Yup, and today we are going to give you our best money advice. We're going to talk about how you can create a monthly budget based on your paycheck and all your bills. And then we're going to talk about how you can account for money you might need for extra expenditures that might come along. And we're not experts on all of these subjects, but you know, we're not dummies. So we're hoping you guys will learn a little bit here that can help you along the way on your budgeting journey. Let's get into this episode. We are now on the line. All right, we're just gonna get right into the first topic and it is our best money advice. Where have you guys gotten your best money advice for your life? Why is that your best money advice? Well, I'm gonna start by saying what it is and then I'll tell you where I got it from just so I don't undercut the actual importance and how I feel like it should be used. The advice is first rule about money. Never use your own money. Now, this saying is taken different forms throughout my life. When I was first got it when I was really young to now where I'm making my own money and I'm doing my own budgeting. But uh, this nugget has come to me from none other than Corey Baxter from That's So Raven. Oh he said once gosh. an episode, and I was like, that is how I'm going to work with money my entire life. So first rule about money is never spend your own money. The reason why I use this phrase is it makes a lot of sense. When I was younger and I didn't have a lot of money, it was basically like birthday money and maybe some extra money that you got from selling lemonade or whatever. You know, don't use your own money because at that point when you're a kid, it's like, hey, most people have jobs and they're doing stuff. So like when you ask to like buy something or you try to get something little, it's not a lot for somebody else to be like, oh, you know what? You know, I'll give you the money for that. So you don't have to spend your own money so then you can save it for later. But as you know, you grow up and you become someone who makes their own money, so there are uh, a lot of different ways that you don't use your own money, whether it's actually having cash on you, on your person, you have cash that in your bank, your debit card, things that you can pull out very easily. There are certain things like, say, credit that you can't quite use for everything. Cash, you can basically use for everything. Cash is king. So if somebody, if an emergency happens or something like that happens, you need a, a liquidation of actual funds. If you use all of your cash that you have, you can't hit hit it like that. So, you know, you can put stuff onto like a credit card or you put things onto things that aren't as tangible as cash money so that if you do need it for something else, you have that cash money. You're not using your money, but obviously it will go to those credit cards given nothing else happens or you don't need to liquidate anything immediately. So don't use all of your money because you want to be able to have things that you can move quickly when you need it. That's funny though, because I feel like you really have a lived by that quote your whole life. Because I swear, I feel like everyone always just paid for your stuff when we were younger. And then all of a sudden I was like, wait, how do you have money to buy a basketball hoop? Like, I'm confused. Where did you get this money from? <laughs> yeah, from spending oh, yeah. everyone else's money. <laughs> yeah. I would use everyone's greatly of graciousness to your advantage and uh it's not like super like greedy and malicious like that it's just you know so that you can then that's how i got money every year to spend for christmas is i just save all my money and then boom christmas came i actually had that money my advice is kind of related to yours because you have talked about how that kind of went into your credit card spending and like you'll pay yourself back when you're done mine is a little bit about that credit card thing it's don't spend money that you don't have. So yes, I think everybody should be using a credit card and then paying back that credit card with your debit card so you can build yourself credit and you can get points. And, you know, there's a lot of like extra bonus stuff that you can get from your credit Cash card back. and using it. Exactly. <laughs> but 
just don't spend the money you don't have. So I got that from dad. My dad told told me that like randomly. I think I was I told him like, oh, yeah, I got a credit card. Like it has like a good like credit line. I'm really excited. It's like my first credit card that I'm opening. And then he went into this whole thing about like, oh, you shouldn't spend the money you don't have. Like just because you have a credit card doesn't mean that that's money you can use. You can't spend money on your credit card unless you know you can pay yourself back later. Like at the end of the month, if you don't think you can pay off the credit card within the month, then you shouldn't be spending that much on your credit card. And that kind of has to do with just like everything. Like don't spend your paycheck when you know that that money actually should be going to your rent. Otherwise, you're going to get yourself in a sticky situation and you're spending money that actually is already supposed to be for a different purpose. And then you run into like, oh, no, I don't have money for all the necessities I need to spend for. So don't spend money that you do not have. Unless you're good for it. Uh, the best money advice that I've ever come across is to put money aside for emergencies. Uh, I know it's not as fun as the first two little tidbits that you got from Jen and Crystal, but uh, I've ran into a number of emergencies in my life, especially getting older. Things have happened where I'd wake up, go outside, and I have a flat tire. You know, things like this, you need to have money set aside for. Um, obviously, these things can't go completely accounted for. So you want to be prepared in case there is an emergency that happens. You have something in the bank or to the side uh, to be able to pay for these things because some emergencies need to be tend to right then and there. And you don't want to be caught left unprepared and not having any money uh, and then getting yourself in a much worse situation. The only thing is, how do you know what's an emergency? It's a fashion I'm... emergency. <laughs> what is an acceptable emergency? What if you're like, I'm starving on a rough day. Oh, I scream emergency. emergency. <laughs> it's actually the last day that the NBA all-star tickets are on sale. Uh, and I haven't bought mine yet. So I have to get them now. It's oh. an emergency. We're talking, I'm thinking we're talking like, like medical emergencies and then just emergencies that have to do with like necessities, right? I think the tire soliloquy is definitely something that uh, is a good bar. If it's not like something you need every day, like a car, uh, you might have a fashion emergency. You need to get a, a new T-shirt <laughs> or a new thing for a party. But guess what? You have other clothes. You don't have another car or tire that you can just get out of the blue. You know? Oh, yeah. Uh, Steve, where'd you get your <laughs> money advice from? So I actually got that money advice from my dad as well. Um, he had told me when I was a teenager to prepare for any kind of emergencies that might happen. He saw me spending money left and right as a teenager. And he's like, hey, just because you have extra money doesn't mean you should spend it. Be prepared for any kind of emergency that might come up. You never know. And it's always great to have some money put aside uh, in case those emergencies do come up. Damn, dad's got the best money advice, huh? They've been through it. <laughs> I've been, <laughs> I have been through it. <laughs> and I mean, don't think that like, if you don't have any money for emergencies right now, like you don't have to, you know, be super like, oh my God, I'm super behind. Cause I feel like even us, like we're like almost, well, he's in, in his thirties already. I'm almost in my thirties and we're still like trying to find the balance of saving enough to have for emergencies. You know, like, I feel like that's a lesson that we're continuously learning you're not too late wherever you start in life. Just now you can account for it and you can learn more about like how much you should have in that savings bank and how much you should have in for emergencies and how much for your savings that can actually go to fun stuff. So definitely a learning experience as you go through life. So it is OK if you are a little bit younger, but if you are younger and you don't have money for any kind of emergencies, don't have any emergencies. <laughs> That's the bottom line. If you don't have the money, then you can't have one. Okay, so if you think it's an emergency and you look at your wallet, it's empty. Sorry, it's not an emergency. Oh, my God. <laughs> you haven't allowed yourself You're that screwed. luxury. <laughs> oh, no. When you are young and you start working, I feel like my best money advice is to start your 401k. Like, when they ask you, usually when you start working your job, even if it's a part time, they're like, oh, do you want to contribute to a 401k? Do you want to do all that? I always say start when you're young. The younger you start 
putting money somewhere where it's like in a bank or some type of bond or some type of stock, the more time you have for that money to increase. And the younger you start, the better you're going to be when you're older. Uh, I don't know where that came from, but my one of the best money advice was just starting my 401k right away. And I mean, I'm only 28 and I have a good chunk of change in my retirement fund now. And I think I started my 401k when I was 16 years old. So I really recommend to go ahead and start saving for your retirement as soon as you can. Did you guys start saving for your retirement that young? I have not. I probably started not so within the last four years, probably. I don't keep that that big a tab. I just notice when I look at my paycheck, I'm like, ah, 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 ah. Where's my money? (laughs) They took it. They took it. I don't have it. Next time, (sighs) next time I'm going to get them. So I get it in that sense that I know it's coming out, but I don't keep that too many tabs on it exactly. Although I should. I didn't start my 401 early. I think I started within the last 10 years. I mean, I'm over 30 now. So it was, well, I was in my 20s when I started. Yeah, it really does make sense to start it off early because then you can understand how 401ks work. I mean, you don't early on. You'll see that they're taking money and on, you know, over the course of your career or over your life, you'll see that this money has been accumulating uh, and you have some money set aside for your own retirement, which is a really good. Yeah, I feel like we could have a whole episode talking about 401k and where it goes and how you could pay attention to it and how you can gain money faster depending on where you're putting your 401k money. Because believe it or not, you can decide where your 401k money sits and where your money is sitting really changes the dynamics of how much money can be increased over time. So just in general, Apple, Samsung, <laughs> of Microsoft, give me all, give me Best Buy. I'll do it all. Blockbuster, no. maybe? <laughs> just in general, start saving for your 401k. That's another like general money advice that I think everyone should follow. So there's the uh, idea, like say you win the lottery. So this is just the sidebar. There's the idea that if you win the lottery, there's the two options they give you. They give you take it all now or take it weekly. So you have this money coming in every week. What do you guys what 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 would you pick? And then I'll tell you what the 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 math and money experts would tell you. <laughs> I'm going to go with lump sum. I'm sorry because I mean, yes, I understand when you do a lump sum, they take a quite a bit of taxes out but to me it's like if you do the weekly you're signing into a contract with the government saying like they have the rights to give you the money weekly but say if there's something that goes wrong with the economy you know they can't pay you anymore there's really nothing you that you can do about it but if you get the lump sum you get it all right away and then you can best finance yourself than having the government decide what your weekly sum is i mean i'm not i've never won the lottery before obviously but i don't know how you know if it can just like change that number for you for the weekly or whatever but yeah go uh, what would you do steve i would definitely take all the money right away uh if i won the lottery i want it all on my table all at once oh i hope we chose the right one the 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 money gods the 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 numbers people uh, would uh, have you guys looking pretty smart right about now. Because, yes, they say to take that money and just take all of it now. You do get hit, boom, 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 with all those taxes and stuff. But the idea is that inflation is a mother effort. <laughs> that inflation <laughs> is the reason why you'd want to do that. <laughs> because as time goes by, that money value is given the idea that you get the same amount every week. You're getting technically less money every time because the value of a dollar gets less every year oh. subsequent. And it would be better to take as all the money you can get. You can invest that money and then it would actually gain value as it loses value from inflation. So the idea would be to take all of it in. So that's Very what nice. the money people mm-hmm. would say. I personally... Was like, you know, just give it weekly. I don't really care. All this is bonus. It's gravy. You know, it's, it's gravy. You know, oh. I get that money every week. 
I don't have to take care of it. I don't have to worry about it. But maybe I should listen to you guys and the money experts and just take it all in. I want all the money. And I want it now. I had a feeling it was a lump sum. All right. So I hope you guys learned something that you didn't know before. And take some of our money advice into your finances. And now we're going to jump into a section about your paycheck, monthly spending, monthly budget. How do you go about creating that monthly budget for yourself so that you're paying everything you need to pay off and still have money to spend on things that you can enhance your life with? I think a bottom line here is to not spend the entire paycheck. Obviously, you want to budget your money out correctly so you're paying your bills, other expenditures, what have you. But say you have some money left over and you've been wanting these new pair of shoes, don't go ahead and just blow it just because you've had all of your other finances covered. As much as possible, avoid spending your entire paycheck. You know that TikTok audio where they're sitting there and they're like, it's like a reward to me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and they're like, oh, I like go grocery shopping and then I go and I buy McDonald's after I buy all the groceries <laughs> of the week. And it's like, oh, it's like a reward. That's kind of that's how I feel if like you have that extra money at the end of the paycheck and you just blow it out something stupid. It's like, oh, it's like a reward to me. Yeah, don't fall into that trap <laughs> of rewarding yourself for uh, actually budging your money correctly because then you're falling into a pit of rewarding yourself for actually doing nothing really so i got some like actually specific a specific way for you guys to budget your spending for the month so typically everybody gets paid bi-weekly so i'm gonna just pretend like that's my example here so you're getting paid bi-weekly every two weeks let's 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 just pick a month right let's say april okay we're gonna start in april you get paid the first and third week of April, right? So you got April 1st, you're getting paid, right? And then on April 15th, you're also getting paid. What you want to do next, you write down the dates you're getting paid and you write down how much you're getting paid that month. All right, let's just say you make 500 every paycheck, okay? You're getting paid on the 1st and 15th. And now you got to write down all the different bills you have for that month and what dates they're due. So let's pretend you got a gas bill that's due on the 8th and then you got a electric bill that's due on like the 19th and then you got your student loans that's due on the 21st and then so you got a car payment that's due on the 5th so you got rent due on uh may 1st right we got five payments here uh, bills here we got gas electric student loans your car and rent right for the next month and you got your two payments so you look and see where those costs fall within the paycheck. So we got gas on the 8th. It's before your 15th paycheck. So I would put it under the first paycheck. You would pay that off. Electrics on the 19th. So that doesn't have to be paid by the first paycheck. So I'd put it under the 15th a paycheck. And then I got student loans due on the 21st. I'll put that under the 15th, the 15th paycheck as well. And then you got the car that's due on the 5th. That's got to go under the first paycheck. So we got two things that you're paying bills for on the first paycheck. And then you got two things that's on the second paycheck. And then you got rent. When I do rent, I always do whatever the cost of your rent is the, the next month. You save half of that each paycheck, right? You got two paychecks, you split it in half. So you pay rent, half of it in the first paycheck, you save it. And then you the second paycheck, you save half of rent, right? And from there, you go ahead and you take your 500 paycheck and you minus your bills and your rent and you minus for the next paycheck too. And then you get whatever you have left over after you pay your rent and your bills, right? So then now this is your potential money to be saved. After that, you got to think about all the other necessities that technically aren't like a monthly bill you have to pay for. So you got your groceries, food, um, bank, and then you got your car gas bank, and then I account for entertainment. And then I got my actual savings account. And then you got your savings that's also split into two, which is savings for general and then savings for something you actually want to save for. Say you want to save for vacation. And then you got your emergency savings, 
All right. And then you do that Ooh, for every we're not single make it 500. <laughs> so let's do like the first. If um, gas was like 20 bucks, car payments like 80. And then you need to save like 200 for rent. So now for two weeks, I'd say like $80 grocery for two weeks. You got gas, let's say 40. That's 120. And then say you got 40 for entertainment, like $20 a week. And then now you got what's left. 80, 200 minus 160, you got 40 bucks. So now you got $40 you can save. So I'd put $20 in general. You'd put $10 in vacation and you put $10 in emergency. And there you go. So now you can spend $20 a week on something fun. You got your gas accounted for, your groceries accounted for. And then you also got savings for general sense. You got money going in a vacation fund. You got money going in emergencies. And then that's how you budget for the month. I mean, obviously, you probably could be making more or less, but you would adjust this depending on your specific situation. That's how I go about budgeting for the month. Um, and then I put all of these, I put my paycheck dates on in a notes. And then as I go through the month and I actually pay for stuff, I'll put like a check mark or like a star. Like, okay, I already paid for that. I paid for that. I went ahead and put it in my savings. And I pretty much just mark off every time I do something on my list for that paycheck, just so I make sure everything is in where it needs to be. Really simple, smart, and pretty easy to follow. And it change you could change it for really any amount that you have. But here's the million dollar question: April's got three paydays. What? Oh, how, how are you? How are you? What are you oh. doing with that third one? Is that straight to ice cream exclusively? I ice love cream that and basketball question. games. So. Typically, if you got three paychecks in a month and then the other month has another paycheck, you can, I usually do the first two paychecks paying for most of all the bills and everything and rent. And then the third paycheck you would allocate to savings oh. or a fun day or Ooh. if you have a vacation coming up. That's how, like, if I'm thinking about like a week's, a year <clears throat> span of budgeting, I love to look for those months where you're getting paid three times because oh, yeah. that means you have one extra paycheck Woo! that you haven't accounted for. And that can go to vacation. That can go to a fun oh, yeah. entertainment bank that can go to savings for the like next holiday season because expenses during that month typically go up. So you can put it into like a December fund and or a November fund. There's like a lot of holidays that happen until those times. So you can split that paycheck up in terms of what you want to do there or say you know you don't have to pay for rent until that third paycheck so the second paycheck of that week you can have that extra amount of money to pay for whatever you want to do or say it's like a summer month and you just want to like you know blow off some money with like friends and like do fun concerts etc so those are really good times to find money in places where you wouldn't normally find it right like you're not actually making more money it's just the way it's allocated that month you have like a little bit more wiggle room in terms of spending so it's really up to you but i would always make it smart again budget that paycheck you got you're gonna put like 200 into savings you're gonna put 200 into i'm gonna just be crazy and spend whatever i want i'm gonna put the next 100 into november fund so always allocate it in a way that you know that you're setting your future self up for success would you go as far as paying your bills a month early i think well a lot of bills that i normally pay for like you can only pay like when they release it like if i have an electric bill in in april and i pay it already and then i know i have a third paycheck i can't pay for may because they don't bill my may yet would you put that money to the side? Let's say, I don't know, you could throw it in a shoebox or something and be like, this is money for rent that I'm not going to spend. Yeah, I think so. And then just live also again within your means for those two paychecks for that entire month. Yeah, that's, I think honestly, the smartest thing if you have like an extra paycheck is to put it all in savings, preferably a savings account that has an interest amount so that you're making money by just putting it in a bank or you can throw it in stocks, but I'm not. 
I'm not well versed in the stock system <laughs> or the NFT system, but I think wherever you want to put your money, you want it to be in a place where, you know, you're making money without having to do anything. I can't see these things clearly without a clear computer monitor. So I got to get a new computer monitor so I can see my money. I mean, yeah, I, I think like it really depends on where your needs are at. Like, obviously, a monitor is like a splurge. But if you know that that's something you're going to be using for the whole year, I think it's there is enough justification there to go ahead and spend your third paycheck on that. Oh, well, let's go. I also need a new computer chair. I need a desktop. And a mouse, keyboard. You can't just get the You're monitor. a little overboard now. I got a third paycheck. A little, good. A little volatile kind of quote that you can use for the situation uh, that I like to use sometimes is if you, it is something that brings you joy and makes you happy, it is not a waste of money. There you use go. Use that at your own risk, fellas. <laughs> what yeah, I love I is spending money. We, you want to... You don't want to have to work to live, right? You want to... I don't want to survive. I way, want to live. It's okay to go a little crazy and spend on things that reward yourself for being really well budgeted for the rest of the year, right? So I think it's okay to cross the line there sometimes and just, you know, as the kids in my days said at YOLO, you only live oh. once, right? <laughs> you must have been you, you only super live old, once, huh? but you know, YOLO <laughs> once in a while. What do they say nowadays? All right. So, a quick thing that is very useful and handy. Uh, but for all those people that uh, are like me and are freelance, we don't know what we're going to get paid that week, that next week, that bi week. It changes. I, as I say, when people say, oh, how's work? I could work anywhere from one to seven days a week. So it's not the same. So what I do as far as putting savings or kind of budgeting my money is I use percentages. Percentages is a, is a lot easier for things that fluctuate. If I not if I get five hundred dollars for one paycheck and then the next one is seven hundred dollars, the next one's three hundred dollars. If I allocate a percentage, those percentages play throughout the thing. So as a total, I still come out with the same percentage. It's not a certain money value. So if you have a work, a line of work that is more on the freelance side and your paycheck changes from week to week, month to month or whatever have you, uh, I say take percentages into account. You're going to save this percentage of money. This. So it can be used every time and you don't have to like get fixated. Oh, I need to save $200 this week. I need to save $200 and then say you have $300 and you're like, oh, well, now I can't pay for anything else. So just work with percentages too. And this also falls in line with uh, what I had said earlier, where, you know, as much as possible, just try to avoid spending the entire paycheck because if you're like Jen and, you know, the hours at work aren't guaranteed. So it's a little more up in the air. You don't know when you're going to work. You don't know when your next paycheck is going to be or how much it's going to be. Uh, it's nice to be able to, you know, take control over how much money you do have. So if you do have extra money, don't just spend it. Think of these things. Also, you know, put money aside for your emergencies because these things do happen. Yeah, and yeah. that reminds me, like, if you do freelance, if you say you're starting off, like you just started your job, you're going to have to like really scrap for like at least the first three months, right? Because you're going to have to, you're not going to have an entertainment fund, right? Like I said, you're not going to have your vacation fund and you can't, you can't have those kinds of funds right away. And you're just going to have to pay for necessities and everything else should just be going into like a savings account, right? And if you, you know, scrap for those first three months and, you know, struggle a little bit and, you know, eat ramen noodles every day at least by that third month, now you have that hefty savings fund to, you know, save you if, say, you only get one paycheck that month instead of two or instead of three and or say you don't have any jobs that month, at least you're covering yourself for that month and you're not struggling. So I think you got to really account for just in general, like if you're starting off a job, you might want to 
have like a pretty humble experience for the first couple (laughs) months before you can start giving yourself a little bit of like entertainment fun account. Yeah, chicken and rice homemade for the next uh, next four weeks. So after after you do have those kind of, you know, building months, then as you know, because you can start adding a vacation or uh, entertainment savings and stuff. (laughs) But I always also have when I go into savings, I like to categorize it as something different. I say contingency. This is the contingency savings. The contingency savings, I like to categorize as something different because there's as you grow into your own person and you're in your own uh, house, you have your own job and stuff. There are certain things like, you know, if I were to lose my job, how do I stay afloat? So I say the contingency savings. So that's not like. 100% 100% for savings in certain things. It's like, oh, now I have six months of rent or I have four months of rent set aside. If I have everything goes bad and I lose everything, I have something there. There's like that contingency and, you know, regular savings. I, I It's hard to kind of, because that's what it would be for. I like to say regular savings is more for things that is more so planned. Say like, I want to buy a house. I want to buy a car. Um, I say contingency savings for like when all things fail and, you know, you need that money to be set aside to pay for things and take care of people, then that's your contingency savings. I get it. It's like your panic savings. Like, are you, it's just time to panic. There's no money coming in from anywhere else. So now we got yeah, it's a fashion in. emergency. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. Those fashion emergencies happen more often than I'd like. All right, so I hope my little money budget planning example will help you guys start budgeting your paychecks in a way that works best for you. And like we said, if you are a freelancer, try to work on that percentage as opposed to like actual uh, money amount. It, It will definitely help you out in terms of planning for paychecks that might not even come. Definitely have a contingency saving so you have something to lean on if anything happens. And as much as possible, don't spend your whole paycheck up the right off the bat. You know, have some money left over to put into your savings account, to put into that contingency account. And hopefully you guys will be in a better place after that. And now we are going to get into a little game called Spend or Save. Okay. Woo! All three of us, we came up with three different situations on whether or not you should spend or save. And then we're going to see what our choices are. And you guys play along with us here. Let's let's go round robin. I'm, I'm going to start off first. I'm going to go with spend or save. All right. So would you rather spend your money and pay off your car insurance for six months? Oh. Or use that money to plan a vacation. So either, oh, I guess either you're saving money because you're paying off your insurance or you're using that money to pay a vacation. Spend it on a vacation or ultimately save on your car insurance by paying it off. Yep. Hmm. hmm. I'm, uh, I'm going on vacation, dog. What time of year is it? What time yeah, of the year I'm, is it? I'm going. <laughs> it's the time that you want to go on vacation. <laughs> you know what? Time. You always want to have s- savings in your mind, but, uh, you know, spending the money for this uh, a vacay sounds like something I would I would hit the, the green button on. I think so, too. I think, yes, you can pay off your car insurance for six months, but, you know, Sometimes you got to give yourself a little break and spend money on experiences for the year. You know, you're not you're not really saving the money here. You're going to eventually have to pay for it anyway. And whether or not you pay it later, I think it's fine because you're still going to be paying on time if you play monthly and you give yourself a little break by going on vacation. So I would also January's for vacation. February's for that's what that's what (laughs) March is for. That's what April is for. (laughs) Especially April. April's budgeted already. (laughs) All right. So let's say you and all your friends are going to the amusement park and they're all like, "Um, should we spend the extra money and get the fast pass 
Or are we going to wait in line for the full amount of time like peasants? You getting a fast pass? Or are you saving that money? Because if the, the sun goes down <laughs> quick, I don't know. You're really you're really playing with house money there. It's uh, it's getting dark. <laughs> um, I would personally hit the save button on this one. I think as far as waiting in lines and amusement parks, it's one of those things that is probably a guarantee. Like people come into it, they know what they're getting into. So I would spend or save the money on this specific one, and maybe spend a little extra on some of these amusement park foods. Hey, <laughs> there you go. One way to budget your money, right way. How about you, babe? I think I'd also save the money and spend it somewhere else. I think so then definitely go with the save, unless. Oh. There's like a thing where you can like buy for one ride and then all the other rides you save. Like, say there's like a new attraction you guys all really want to go and it's like a four hour wait. Maybe buy just one fast pass for that one ride and save the rest and wait in line for the rest of the day. Pretty smart. Good. All right. It looks like we're all going to be waiting in line oh, with money it. in our pockets. Screw a fast pass all day. <laughs> <laughs> but we did save. What's, what's more precious, money or time? I don't know. All Region. righty. Pin. <laughs> so my saving spending split here is going to be, okay, so you are, you got friends coming over from, you know, all walks of life, say a couple friends that you know all the time, you see all the time, a couple friends that you don't see, they're all in town. You're like, you know what? Let me just have a little house party. Let me have a little gathering for everybody. Uh, do you actually, and there's no special event. There's no special occasion. There's no reason for this. You're just going to do it. Do you spend up. the money to just have this, you know, this nice little house party? Or are you saving the money and say, you know what? Everyone stay home. And get out of my face. I'm inviting people over. I'm here for a good time, not a long time. <laughs> a long time. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm having people come over. I want to share that experience with everyone. At that point, money is secondary to you know, everyone sharing our time together, at least in my eyes. I think so, too. I think every once in a while, you got people all in the right place at the right time where you can spend time with each other. I think quality time with family and friends kind of takes the top seat in terms of money in that situation. So I'm going to go ahead and spend. It's not like you're going to have a party every single weekend with these people. You know, it's like once once in a blue moon, it's a perfect time. I'm going to go with that one spend. I'm not throwing one of these extravagant P. Diddy parties that people have heard about 10 years ago. Uh, I'm talking like everyone's coming over. We're ordering food. BYOB. We're hanging out. <laughs> yeah, we're doing our own thing. It's Cash it's hat collection. <laughs> Everybody fives it on in the hat when you come <laughs> to the door. <laughs> and for the introverts in here, I will also I will say this for you guys. Save it. Because Thanksgiving's around the corner, Christmas around, a birthday's <laughs> around the corner. There's always something around the corner. So just get out of my face for a sec. <laughs> <laughs> I'll catch you on the red end of my text messages. Oh, Peace. No. Okay, spend or save. Are you going to spend a little money on yourself because you had a really hard week and you want to reward yourself, so you're going to go on a little shopping spree and buy a couple things you've been wanting to buy for yourself. Not necessities, just like something extra, like you said. Like maybe you wanted a new monitor, a new mouse. Or save the money and pay off the credit card that you've been needing to pay off. Ooh, <laughs> baby. Am I really saving money if I don't buy the monitor? Because I'm still... <laughs> Paying what off the credit this? card. <laughs> What's going what on? Time is this? <laughs> <laughs> it's either you're gonna paying hit. off your credit card or you're going to do another minimum payment and screwing yourself over. The great thing about credit cards is that you could pay it off and once the money clears, you could buy whatever you oh, are planning no. on buying oh. to begin with. <laughs> don't spend money you don't have. <laughs> um, I'm going to so hit the save sense. button on this one. I'm hitting the save button. <laughs> Uh, on this one uh, i'm gonna go and put that money into the credit card and get rid of those uh those debts because you know you know you don't want to spend your own money but you don't want to owe anyone your money so i'm gonna go ahead and hit true. the save button there not that jen swayed me or anything but i think i'm also going to be paying off a little <laughs> bit of that credit card only because i know what that debt feels like and it's not fun very well done you guys are very <laughs> wise i would also 
pay off that credit card. Maybe buy it next time you got a little money left over. Let's say it's midweek. Uh, everything has been going according to plan. You had a long day of work. You have all the food that you were preparing to cook that night and you got lazy. You spend your money and just order food for delivery so you can sit back and relax. Or do you just save it? Do what you planned initially. Cook your food. Go through the trouble. Am I picking what I w- would want to pick or the one that I know actually pick in real life? <laughs> what is your gender save budgeting advice? I mean, I probably if it's my life, it's the same. same. <laughs> if it's if it's what I'll actually do, I'm hitting that spend button probably nine times out of ten times. Same, um, I'm, I'm gonna so go bad. ahead and order that that <laughs> I'm gonna order that that meal and save myself the dishes, the cook time, the prep time, the cleanup <laughs> time. Because you know what? Sometimes it's just easy to say, you can leave it at the door. <laughs> 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 oh, oh uh, uh, ordering and makes it ordering and just makes it so easy i don't know sometimes for my peace of mind maybe <laughs> paying a little a little on this dinner is gonna help me choose the save later on <laughs> yeah i mean i would want to say that i would uh cook the dinner that i have those stuff for but maybe in real life i'd probably spend the money and get dinner <laughs> I don't know. Have you guys heard that thing where if you're like two people or one person ordering in food or like buying food out could still equate to the same amount if you bought groceries? Because if you buy groceries, it's hard to buy for just like a single or two servings. It's like it's easy. Yes. It's hard to like buy like groceries enough that you're actually going to use because you end up like wasting a lot of it because you're just one or two people. And then just if you buy out, you know, there's a lot of affordable places you can get food and you end up actually saving money. I guess I could see, I see that, that being true. a possibility. But also, what you know, if before you when I've food. done meal preps and stuff is I'm making that bulk meal. So I'm not making a small meal. I'm making that bulk meal and I'm just splitting it have the of the same meal for like the next four days. And then you go out and you get groceries again. So, yes, if you're like trying to vary your meals every single day and you want to get to buy for, you know, for two or buy for one, then I can see how that could possibly equate to that. But if you're like meal prepping and stuff, it's it's definitely way, way cheaper if you're going to eat the same meal four times a day or four times in a week. Yeah, I think you got to do it right. But I did hear that somewhere. I'm pretty sure. At the end of the day, everyone's going to be ordering food. So it doesn't matter. Spend or save. We've we hit it it's a fashion emergency you just want something new you've been going to your closet and you've seen the same stuff and you keep picking the same thing to wear you've outgrown a lot of your clothes and you're picking out the same ones you just need something different are you gonna go out there and spend your money to go shopping buy a couple different things buy some pants buy some buy some shoes buy a clothing just because you want something different you don't necessarily need this you have plenty of clothes in your closet or you're just gonna save that money i don't need it now i have these clothes i could buy when i need to dang um i do like buying clothes but i think i'm gonna go save some yeah i think i'm gonna go saving <laughs> just because i feel like i've gone i've been in those times where i'm like feel like I should buy new clothes, but then I end up not doing it. And I end up, I still have a lot of clothes that I could just rewear. I don't think it's that big of a deal to me. So I think I can go a pretty long time without buying new clothes. So I'm going to go with save. Very nice. I think I'm also going to be saving in this, in this situation. You know, not too often do I ever look in my closet and feel like I need more clothes, maybe some different clothes. But, you know, that comes to just kind of like, necessity thing where i feel like i have enough to support myself so i'm not gonna go ahead and just go out there and spend money on clothes just because i feel like i want to look different i mean obviously i i do want different clothes at times but i'm just not gonna go you know on amazon or go to these macy's online or something and just spend that money i'm saving well these guys choose the high road 
and they go ahead and save that money. Everybody else can come with me and we'll enact our <laughs> de-stressing activity <laughs> and oh, help ourselves self-care. internally and put some nice. self-care on the table and go ahead and you know solve this fashion emergency. <laughs> <laughs> Pick and choose. Pick and choose. This is my last one. I'm gonna say this is a little difficult. Okay. Maybe not so much. I don't know. <laughs> okay, here we go. So uh, this is your best friend, like your literally your best friend. And you know that he or she has been wanting this like expensive item. I don't know what it is. They've been talking about it like, oh, I really want this for my birthday this year. Like this is like my dream gift for my birthday. This person is turning like a milestone. I don't know, like say they're turning 30 or 25, a milestone birthday. And that's what they want, right? But then they're also inviting everyone out to go out for dinner, for drinks. They want to get bottle service. It's going to be a pretty expensive night because they're going out downtown. Do you go spend the birthday with your best friend because they want to go out for dinner and, you know, get that birthday, birthday events night? Or do you save that money and buy them the gift they've been wanting? A hard one. It is. It's what? a tough one, but I think I could answer it fairly quickly. I'm going to go ahead and I'm spending. I'm going out for that event. Uh, the yep. gift, unless it's super time sensitive, like he wants this edible arrangement and he needs to eat it now. But <laughs> if there's, you know, Christmas, there's Thanksgiving, whatever event you can f- you throw in for a gift. Sometimes if it's your best friend, you just be like, yo, I know you wanted this. Here you take this. But if he wants to go out and he wants to have a night for his birthday, that's not something that you can just throw on and be like, hey, Christmas, let's go party like how we wanted yep. to and have this bottle service for his birthday because it's a different day. So I'm going to go ahead and hit that spend and, you know, spend the time and spend the money, uh, you know, popping bottles in the club. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> yeah, I'm spending that money easy. Um uh, I definitely would rather share that experience, like Jen said, with my best friend versus getting them a gift that I could probably pile on in a different holiday or something like that, or maybe even just later on in the month. Uh, I want to, you know, share these moments. I'm here for a good time, not a long time. <laughs> it keeps coming up. You know, keeps I... coming up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm going out. That's good. Yeah, I, I would go experience too. Experiences over stuff, you know. You can be a material girl a different day, all right? You can be a material girl a different day, but sometimes experiences are probably the best things you can spend your money on. Very nice. Okay, so now let's say we are in the heat. We are mid-season of budgeting, and we have gotten everything in line. Uh, You go to the grocery store, and you see that something, I don't know, let's say like, Soda or orange juice, a drink. Uh, Bend. <laughs> free for four. <laughs> buy two, get buy get, five, get one free. You can get one twelve pack of cherry cokes for let's say four dollars. But if you get six twelve packs of cherry coke, you're gonna be spending about two fifty for each twelve pack. Uh, obviously, you don't need six packs of cherry coke at any given time, but you are saving money if you buy it in bulk. Are you spending and getting the extra five? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can spend it out for a couple months. Or there, are you going to save and just get the one? But you if, might end up be losing money up front. <laughs> if you're my mother, you'd probably buy six. <laughs> you buy it. You buy it. <laughs> <laughs> It's cheaper, right? You just I've have to spend eight no, times more said, than you planned. Those sales really it all get the time. people. So I've I've seen it be <laughs> take people in so much that me personally, I don't ever do those things, even if it might be saving a couple things to change. Because what I always say is, you know, we go to the store and then there'll be two things of orange juice, and she'd be like, "Okay, buy two because there's a sale for two. I'm like, "Well, no one's drinking the one, so why are we getting two? So (laughs) for me, I am going to save that money. I'm just going to get that 12 pack of cherry Coke. That's going to hold me in for a while. And 
the extra five, you know, <laughs> unless it's like a Super Bowl party and the whole both teams on both sides are coming, you're fine. <laughs> Just pay for it later. At, Jen, this kind of goes into your liquidity situation. You want to be liquid, right? So why like say you get those orange juices. <laughs> OK, you got one for this month, one for the next one. But what if you need the money for that second orange juice this month? So you got to save that money. Don't spend it on things that you think you might use later. I'm going to go and just buy what you need and don't fall victim to the crazy sales in the store. But you're saving well, I don't want to lose money. No. Each, no. each one, you're saving a dollar no, fifty. No, 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 no. That single 12-pack would have been free because of the saving. I, I don't need six freaking cans of coffee. Cherry Coke, though, I mean. That's good. Good decisions. And for the final savings spending round, uh, so we all have these days. So you have a free day. You have a free day. You don't have work. You don't have to do anything. You don't have school. You, don't have, you just have a free day. Are you going to spend that money to a little top golf action, a little bowling hey. action, a little, a little, I'm in. A, a little archery action. Oh. I'm in. I'm in. Three days. I'm spending. Are you spending that money, <laughs> or you know what? Why do I need to do that on my free day? I could stay home. I could watch TV. There's endless entertainment here. I can just stay and save that money. Are we spending on a little Steph Curry top golf action? What do we feel? Oh. Dang, I'm going to go. I'm a, I, I think I think I'm going to save. I think I think depending on the situation, like if if like say someone's in town that normally is not in town and you want to go have a good time. Sure. I'm going I'm to spend the money. I'm going to go to Top Golf or like say it's someone's birthday or I don't know if there's like some type of special thing tied to the event. Sure. But if it's just like. Oh, I'm bored. Let's do something we don't normally do. I think I'm going to go ahead and save and just stay home and watch a movie. I think if this is like, you know, my day off is like a Tuesday, you know, ain't much going on. I could stay home and just relax or understand that there are no lines at Top Golf, no lines at the archery range. <laughs> All the lanes are open at the bowling Weekday alley. Weekday special, baby! Sure, I might <laughs> indulge. I think this situation is purely circumstantial. Uh, like Crystal said, if there's someone in town, if there's something that we can celebrate, then sure, I'll go ahead and indulge because all that sounds like fun. Uh, but if it's just a regular weekday, nothing's going on, you know, I can spend my day at home and save my money. Sounds like responsible spending to me. <laughs> All right. I hope you guys had some fun playing some spender save with us. And now we're going to get into our last topic, which is how you are going to account for extra money expenditures. Where are you going to get that money from? Do not spend your credit cards on leisure items. I have a credit card and it's very tempting to go walk into a Best Buy and buy a brand new 70 inch 4K TV. Even if I were have the money to just do that whenever I wanted to, it's probably best that you don't. It's easy to spend the money that, you know, you might not have in the future. And, you know, spending your money on a TV in that sense is not a great idea. You might not have that money by the time you go and pay your credit card. So it's probably advisable not to spend your money on leisure items, such as a TV or a computer or a desk, all these other things that I want. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So like example, like if you go back to my monthly spending plan, like all the different bills that you have to pay, like gas, your car, your rent, or like groceries, your car gas everything that you know you have to spend money for and you're setting aside money from your paycheck because you know it has to be paid those can go on a credit card because you already you're taking that from your paycheck you know it's already going to be there for you to use on that stuff you paste that with your credit card and then use your paycheck to pay off your credit card so i think that's very smart 
Because, I mean, say I go and spend that money on a credit card on a TV or something. I couldn't tell you a plan on how I'm going to be paying it back. Especially if the TV costs $1,000 and I make $1,000 a month. If I'm making $500 every paycheck and I'm saving what looks like we chalked up $40 a paycheck, there's no telling how much I'll be paying back that credit card because I'd be in debt for so long. Uh, which is why you shouldn't be spending your credit card money on these things. So with extra expenditures, I think the idea that you want to have is you want to make sure that you have it all accounted for. So you want to keep all these things, whether you write it on a list, you put it in a separate folder, you have it written down somewhere. These are the extra things that you had to, you paid for. So you got a TV, that's a thousand dollars. You want to write that down. You want to make sure that you know what these extra things are and how much you paid for that. So you want to have that stuff in a separate area. Yeah, you want to yeah. have that in a separate area so that you can account for it very easily. So you have that receipt. You have that uh, written down somewhere. They're all in one folder, one portfolio, an accordion portfolio. Make sure you check those out because those are very handy as far as keeping things in line. So that's, you know, you want to keep keep very good account for anything that's extra that you have to spend for. That kind of goes into my first thought. It's just allocating your savings into different buckets. I kind of did that in my example where you have your savings, but the savings that you have go into different buckets, your general, your vacation, your emergency, or like say your extra expenditure for that month is that best friend's birthday. You know, they want to go out and they want to do bottle service. Like that's not something you accounted for because, you know, you don't really count for like birthdays in your monthly spending. So that's like something, oh, darn, like that's my best friend. I, I need to account for that. That should go into your savings a month before. Right. So if their birthday's in May in April, you got to be like, OK, I'm putting fifty dollars into my best friend's expenditure fund. Right. So just allocating your savings in a way that best suits the next month and things that, you know, are coming up. Right. Or say you don't put it into your general savings account for that month and just use that general savings amount for that extra expenditure and just know that you're not saving for your, you know, your normal savings account that month. So say your best friend is having everyone go out to the club and have this grand event for their birthday. Don't be so tied down to your financial plans. You know, you can always reach into that emergency fund and, you know, use a portion of that to go help celebrate so that you're not in debt, you know, on the way to the club. You can't afford a drink or two for your it's best a friend. Best you friend know. Emergency. <laughs> you want to at least go there and be prepared to spend the money that you probably will spend. So, you know, you don't want to give yourself a chokehold by, you know, not using the money that you already have obviously you want to save for emergencies but it's not the bottom line you can always take it out and then put more money back in there uh if you have money you can use it don't be afraid to use it just don't do it just do it in All moderation <laughs> yeah <laughs> don't go Within there acting like it's your reason. birthday buying bottles for yourself <laughs> buying dinner at a club do these things in moderation obviously it's money that you don't want to be spending so just keep that in mind you got to be strategic here, right? You got to make strategic decisions in terms of your money. So you don't have to follow everything to a T, like you said. But my next one is just a more simple way to account for extra money here and there. It's when you're planning out your month and you got people to spend time with or, you know, you want like to make sure you have that self-care time. Try to make those events into things that you don't really need to spend money. Like say, you you know, you, you don't see your friends often, maybe invite them over to hang out and have a home cooked meal and, you know, watch a movie at home as opposed to going out to dinner with them and going to top golf or bowling. So I think just changing the way you spend your time can really help save money in a lot of ways, right? Cause you're spending more time on, Things that don't cost a lot or don't cost anything at all. Like maybe you, you and your friends can just go to a park and hang out and bring your basketball and play some basketball outside instead right. of going to an actual basketball game and having to buy tickets. So I think just keep in mind, there's so many things you can do in life that don't cost a thing. And saving in those things, I think, definitely count 
for saving money. Yeah, so you guys could go and play charades at Crystal's place, or you can come with me, and we're <laughs> gonna do some top golf. Let's go. I'm in. Take your pick. <laughs> <laughs> First word, two words, two syllables. <laughs> hey, it's fun. <laughs> so the last thing I have about extra expenditures and accounting for them, just no, no. We mentioned it briefly in little parts. These are not finite. These are fluid. You don't have to save money all the time, every time, every day, every moment. There can be a time where you're just like, you know what? I can't save money this month. And it's okay because that's the thing about time is that it keeps going. You're going to work and you're going to get money. Money comes back every so often. So, you know, you don't have to save all the time. Don't stress yourself out. You know, we still we still got all those self-care tips. You know, sometimes you just got to spend the money to give yourself a little peace of mind. Give yourself a break, you know, from saving so so many weeks and so many months before and give yourself a little break and put a little money into that fun account obviously given that you are already budgeting your money um i mean it's okay to just go ahead and spend that money on yourself no matter what it is whether it be food uh for delivery because you're too lazy to cook or if it's a thousand dollar tv <laughs> if you have it you can't take it with you when you're gone so you might as well spend it <laughs> but that is given, you know, that you're in the right place to where you can spend that money and it isn't hurting you in the long run. Uh, I think it is OK to spend money. All right, guys. And that wraps it up for today's episode. We hope you guys learned all the tips and tricks that we have in terms of money and saving and budgeting. We gave you a little bit of advice on our favorite advice we've gotten or given in our lifetime ways you can actually plan out your budgeting and your paycheck for the month and we did a little spend or save moment and i hope you guys enjoyed that fun little game and then we closed it out for you with a little bit of ways you can find money or save money or maybe realize you don't need to save every so often for extra stuff so i hope you guys learned a little bit here we had so much fun talking about this stuff and now we're all gonna go buy some takeout and go to top golf so have a good day hey, let's go. <laughs> no i'm kidding that is it for today's episode we hope to see you guys next time and that is it for us and now we are off the line and if you like that content want more content like that please like and subscribe you can check us out on all social media. We are on Instagram and you can also catch us on YouTube. You can listen to our podcast on Apple and Spotify podcast. Thanks again for tuning in. We'll see you next time. So what button do I press? Did I do that? <laughs>